Hello and welcome back to another video. Today I'll be showing you what's new in WordPress 6.4. Before I get into that, don't forget to check out my website at daviesmediadesign.com. I have a new article up available in over 40 languages that shows you all the latest features in WordPress 6.4, including some demo videos, so definitely check that out. You can also enroll in my WordPress Simplified 2023 How to Build Powerful Websites course on Udemy. WordPress 6.4 was released today, and the very first thing I wanna cover here is the brand new 2024 theme that was released with WordPress 6.4. So as you can see here, I'm on the 2024 demo site and you'll see that they have three different demos. So the aim with this theme is for it to be a bit more flexible for the different use cases where this will be applied. So you have an entrepreneur website. If I click on that, you'll see we have a nice clean layout here, nice clean design and it loads super fast. You'll see we have a photographer demo. This is really just a gallery of images, so nothing special there. And then we also have a blogger version of this. So you'll see here, this is more for a blog layout. So nothing too crazy with the 2024 theme. However, there are some really great new features with WordPress 6.4. And I've gone ahead and designed my own little demo website, but let's jump over to the back end of WordPress 6.4. And a lot of the new features will be found either inside the block editor or the site editor. So let's start by clicking on pages. And I'm gonna to navigate to this page I created for this tutorial. Coming back to my demo site, the first new feature I wanna highlight if I scroll down is going to be the new Lightbox feature. So people have been waiting like an eternity for this new feature. All it means is that when you hover your mouse over an image, you're now gonna get this little zoom icon and you can click on the image and it's just going to expand the image so you get a nice larger view of that image directly on the same page here. And you can either click once again or you can click the little X icon there. But when you click once again, it's going to bring that back down to the gallery view. And the cool thing about this is you're gonna have this feature for all of the different images in the gallery. And you can also have it for individual images. So let's jump back over to the block editor and just scroll down to that feature here so you can see how this works. So basically all you do is insert either a gallery block or an image block, and then you're gonna click on one of the images. And if the block setting sidebar doesn't open automatically, you can click this little icon here. And then under the settings tab, you're going to see this little toggle and it says expand on click. As long as that's enabled, that image will have the lightbox feature. And one quick note about this, it's not going to automatically apply the lightbox to all of the images in the gallery. You do have to manually click on each image and enable that in order for it to work. Maybe that's something they will improve in future iterations. The next new feature is that group blocks now support background images. So let me just scroll up here on my demo page and you'll see that this group here has a background image. So if I click on here, the way I got this image here is if you navigate over to the block setting sidebar and you click on the little styles tab, you're now gonna see this new section titled background and you can click on here and it's gonna ask you how you want to import an image so you can open up an existing media library or you can upload a new image from your website. If I click reset, it's going to set that back to just the background color I had here. So let's open up the media library and come over here and select an image and come over here and click select. Now we have that background image. The navigation block now supports buttons without using custom CSS. So if you're not a coder, this is great news. So let's scroll up here. You're not gonna see the navigation on this page because we are not inside the template. To access the template, go to your page tab inside of the settings sidebar and you'll see it says template here and then pages. So we're gonna click on that. And then we'll click edit template to edit the current template that's being used for this particular page. Here we have our uh, template part or whatever it's called now. I believe it's still called a template part. So you can click on that and then click on the navigation block inside of this template part. So what I've noticed is clicking this button will not give you access to the buttons feature. You have to come over here to the block settings sidebar. And then under this first option here, list view, you'll see the same sort of plus button. Click on that, and then you'll see the buttons option there, and now you can add a button. So in this particular case, I have the buttons set up by default to be huge because it looked good over here. 
looks kind of bad up here in the navigation. Ignore that. But now you can, you know, type whatever text you want here, and then you can link to this. And this is another new feature inside of WordPress 6.4. They've improved the linking capabilities here or the linking options. So let's type sample page and hit the enter key. And really the only thing I've noticed here is that open in new tab is no longer in its own little dropdown. Now they just have it right here below the link. So if you wanted to open whatever this links to in a new tab, you can check that option there. So when you're editing templates, you have to come back over here and hit publish. And then you're gonna see that the update has been made to our navigation and I'll hit save. Come over here and click back. And that will return you to the block editor where we are editing our page. And now if I come over here and preview my site, you'll see we have the button here in the main navigation. WordPress 6.4 now supports vertical text as you can see here. So back here in the site editor, all you have to do for vertical text is have a paragraph text block or really any kind of text block. It can be a heading text block. Then come over here to the block settings sidebar and you should see typography here. So click on what's called the kebab icon or the three dots menu icon and then click on text orientation. And once you do that, it's going to show the text orientation option here and you'll see it's going to be set to horizontal by default but now you have the vertical option. So when I click on that, now we have some cool vertical text. The list view feature has received some UI updates. So let's navigate over here to the list view. It's also called document overview. So let's say you're looking for a block on your web page, specifically an image block, and you have multiple image blocks on your site. You can come over here, of course, and expand the various groupings. And once you hit a block that has an image, you're now gonna see this little image preview. And let's just expand this one as well. So here you have a gallery preview. And the cool thing about this is when you expand the gallery, now each individual image has a little preview. So if you're looking for a specific image, you can now easily find it here with the previews. And when you click on it, it's gonna take you right to that image. Another really handy new feature inside a list view is that you can now rename groups. So once again, this does help you find certain group blocks whenever you have a bunch of groups inside of your web page. So if I scroll up, you'll see I actually already have a couple of these groups renamed, but let's scroll down to this group here, which is not named. So this one here. So before I'd have to click on each group to sort of see what they're all about, but now I can click on the little three dots icon and come over here to rename. And now let's name this WordPress features and click save. So now it says WordPress features. And of course that is a lot more descriptive than just having it say group. Another time saving feature in here is if I wanted to duplicate any of the blocks on the page, all I have to do is come over to whatever group or block or whatever I want to duplicate, click on that inside the list view. And then if I hit control shift D or command shift D on a Mac, that is automatically going to duplicate whatever I just selected. So in this case, it is the columns block and that contains multiple other blocks inside of it. So of course I can hit the back button, hit control Z, whatever, but I can just click to undo that real quick. You can also now categorize new patterns that you create directly here from within the list view. So let's come up top here to where it says WordPress benefits. And I want to convert this to a pattern, which is basically just like a pre-styled group of blocks. So I'll come over here to the three dots icon and just come over here to create pattern. So let's rename this pattern. We'll call it benefits. And you'll now see this new text field labeled categories. And what I can do is I can either click on here and just select from any of the categories that are just built into WordPress by default. So let's just select the about category, or I can create my own new category just by typing it. So in this case, I'll type custom and I did this earlier, so it's already in here. But if I hit the enter key, that'll add the new category and I can keep going with more categories. And I'm just gonna turn off synced for now. So now when I come over here and click create, that will create my new pattern. You'll see here, unsynced pattern created benefits. And let's say I was on another web page and I wanted to add that brand new pattern to my web page. Let's exit out of the list view and just click the plus icon here to access the block inserter and come over here to patterns. So now you'll see my patterns and this is actually going to contain the new pattern we just created. If I go to about, 
This will also have the benefits pattern. And if I go to custom, Right here, you'll see the benefits pattern again. So this is a great way to stay organized with your new patterns as you create them and want to add them throughout your website. Speaking of new patterns, there is a new dark horse feature, I'm calling it, because it's not really getting much attention, but I think it is a gigantic new feature. That is the ability to share patterns across multiple websites now with WordPress. So to demonstrate how this works, let's exit out here of the block editor and now go to the site editor. So I'll go to Appearance Editor. And let's navigate here to Patterns and just go to that Benefits pattern we just created. So let's say I wanted to export this and import it into another website. All I have to do is click the three dots icon here labeled Actions and choose Export as JSON. So you'll see the file name here is labeled Benefits and the type is a JSON file. Click Save. If you don't know what a JSON file is, don't worry about it, WordPress really just does everything automatically for you. So now here I am in the site editor of another demo website I have. So if I navigate to patterns, now if I wanted to import that pattern that I just exported, I can come over here and click the plus icon and go to import pattern from JSON. So navigate to the folder where you exported that JSON file and you can click on it and click open. And you'll see a new folder pop up here called My Patterns. Click on that. And now you have your pattern you created on the one website quickly uploaded into another website. So keep in mind that some of the styling may not transfer over if you had some site-wide styles applied to this on the other website. You can always manually go in here and just adjust the styling to your liking. So sticking with the subject of patterns but shifting slightly over to synced patterns, you can now perform an alignment on one synced pattern and that alignment will update across all the synced patterns. Previously, you had to go in and manually change the alignment on all synced patterns throughout your site. So let's navigate here to the WP Admin home screen and we'll go back to pages and back to our WordPress 2024 page. If I scroll down here, I've got this section here, the get in touch section. This is a synced pattern. So let's say I wanted to change the alignment of this from a center alignment to a left align. I can click on here and of course just use the toolbar to change the alignment of all of these. And I'm just gonna change the alignment of the button to justify items left. So now what happens with this new feature is your publish button is gonna have this little circle on it. And even if this is just a draft page, you'll still see this, but I'll hit publish and it's gonna show me the patterns that are affected by this. So this is a synced pattern. It's called contact CTA. When you're ready to save, just hit save. And that little dot will go away. You'll see it says site updated over here in the corner. And now let's just navigate over to another page that has that same synced pattern. So this basics page. And when I scroll down here, you'll see that now the alignment has changed. If I wanted to demonstrate going the other way, click on this. Let's just do that one. Click publish and click save. And let's go back to WordPress 2024 and scroll down here and now you'll see that just the title here has been aligned. The next new feature is that placeholder images can now have a locked or set aspect ratio. So this is gonna be great when you're creating templates. Let me just scroll up here so I have this image block here and let me just come over and delete this block. So the way this feature works is if you click to add a new block and let's click on the image block so right now we have a blank image block and if I come over here to the block settings, right here under settings we have aspect ratio and if I set this to something like standard 4x3, now any image that we place in here in the future will have a 4x3 aspect ratio. So because you can use the block editor for creating templates, this allows you to create templates and just make the template stick with whatever aspect ratio you just set instead of going with the image's original aspect ratio. So let's just demonstrate. I'll click Media Library. Here's the image I had there. You'll see it actually has a 1920 by 1080 aspect ratio, which is like 16 by 9. And if I click Select, you'll see that 16 by 9 image has now automatically been cropped to the 4 by 3 standard aspect ratio. And let me just quickly change the styling of this so that it has rounded corners. And we can hit Save Draft.
the command palette, which was introduced in the last major WordPress release, WordPress 6.3, has received some additional improvements. Mostly it's just been tweaked so that the styling looks better and the language is a bit more concise. Let's come back over here and go to appearance editor. So the command palette is up top here, but let's come over here to pages and back to this page we were just working on. But now we are inside the site editor instead of the block editor. So we'll click on the page to enter it. And as I mentioned in the WordPress 6.3 tutorial, you can access this by hitting Control K on the keyboard or Command K on a Mac. So now you have the command palette. So the design here has been tweaked ever so slightly. It's been improved and the language is more concise. So if I type navigation, instead of it saying open navigation, now it just says navigation. But you also have some new shortcuts here. So for example, you'll see a little breadcrumb down here that's called a block breadcrumb. And I said that slowly because it is a tongue twister. But if I wanted to hide the block breadcrumbs, I can just start to type bread and you'll see it'll pop up here with hide block breadcrumbs. And all I have to do is hit the enter key and now you'll see it says breadcrumbs hidden. So to turn those back on, control K, start to type breadcrumb, hit the enter key. Now the breadcrumbs are visible. Please don't make me say breadcrumbs anymore. And another shortcut if I hit control K is you can open up the list view. So if I start to type list, I can use the down arrow there, hit the enter key. Now the list view opens. And I'm assuming if I wanna close that, yeah, now we toggle that off again. WordPress 6.4 also introduces a new feature called block hooks. And you can see here inside of the WordPress welcome message, they have a little blurb about block hooks. And what it's supposed to do is be able to automatically insert certain functions from a plugin into your website. So the example they give here is they have a little cart icon that automatically gets inserted into your navigation. And I've also seen certain screenshots that show a plugins drop down inside of the block settings sidebar for certain blocks. So if the plugin developer includes some kind of built-in feature that you can toggle on for certain blocks, WordPress is now gonna support that via block hooks. Aside from those features, WordPress has also added some features to improve the writing experience in WordPress 6.4. It's just made things more consistent for certain blocks such as the navigation block, the quote block, and the list block. And finally, they've made over 100 performance improvements. As I mentioned towards the beginning of this video, the goal is to improve WordPress out of the box for SEO which should help your website rank. But that's it for this video. Hopefully you liked it. If you did, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and click the bell icon to be notified each time I have a brand new tutorial. You can check out any of the links to my resources in the description of the video. But thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.